One, two, three. Steve Fox invented. Nice and cuddly over here. Okay, how are you feeling? Pretty good so far, yeah. I really love the events here. Out with my new friends from Scotland, right? Look who killed it out here. How y'all feeling? Super excited. That's why I come here, for the adrenaline. Electronics underwater? That's, that's awesome. We all love us some competition, whether it's basketball, football, track, or even not so physical activities like Catan or Scrabble. Trust me, you don't want to see me in Scrabble. But not all competitive activities are built the same. Matter of fact, one in particular could possibly help change our planet as we know it. I am here in Long Beach, California at the Mate ROV World Championships. This event brings together students from all across the globe, from elementary school all the way through college, to develop a love for engineering and design and to use teamwork to help solve real world problems. Just imagine teaming up with some of your best friends to help come up with a solution that can help combat climate change, help make the world more sustainable, or even improve the health of our oceans. Sounds like fun, right? You have no idea. So you're probably wondering, what exactly is an ROV and how does this underwater robotic stuff actually solve real world problems? Well, ROV stands for Remotely Operated Vehicle, which means exactly what you think, a mechanical vehicle that's controlled remotely. This is slightly different than the rovers we've sent to Mars, as those vehicles are autonomous, meaning they're programmed to maneuver and perform tasks on their own. ROVs are typically tethered and controlled by a pilot from a different location. If you've ever played a video game with wired or wireless gaming controls, you're already almost halfway to becoming an ROV pilot yourself. We've sent ROVs to do everything from searching for oil and drilling sites to exploring long lost shipwrecks and artifacts. On my recent expedition on board the EV Nautilus, a large exploration vessel that performs incredible scientific research all across the globe, we used multiple ROVs to view some of the most mysterious deep sea creatures. ROVs give us the ability to do things that would be far too dangerous or impossible to explore on our own. But right here in this pool at the Mate World Championships, these students are using their ROV knowledge to solve some challenges that have some real life implications. A large part of the theme of this year is trying to like maintaining fish pens and then uh, replacing inner array uh, systems to be able to use what we've learned and potentially apply that in the real world to potentially fix these problems that we're having and keep like the ocean cleaner and populated with fish. I think that's a really cool thing. You see that the main issue is pollution in, in the ocean. Not only are we making a, a new instrument, a new tool to pick up this garbage, this pollution, but we also create like a conscience in ourselves. And that makes us also try to create a conscience in, in others. A competition is not just a game. It's, it has a really nice background. We learn a lot about different species, about uh, artificial intelligence, about seagrass, uh, blue carbon, about coral reefs. Teams are separated into groups based on experience level, from scouts who are just beginning their journey into robotics, all the way to explorers whose today's challenges aren't their first rodeo. I decided to join UW ROV after doing a space engineering club last year. I like coding and robots need a lot of code, so I yeah, signed up. For this course, I didn't know at all what I wanted to do, and this course helped me find what I wanted to do in life. It's given me skills that, you know, I, I value a lot more than just as skills that you'd put on a resume. I mean, these things, I'm, I'm gonna use these abilities in my future job, absolutely. It's just a really accepting and welcoming environment. And to back up what Issa said, yeah, we're like representation that yes, there are women in STEM and this is what we can do. And we can empower young women. Just like some of the ROVs I've had a chance to work with, they're all unique and designed differently, capable of performing many different functions to accomplish the task at hand. One thing about this ROV is the frame is actually reused from our, our past ROV. My first year of competing, we used these claws but we had some complications with them with the gear stripping so we switched to the same brand but the vex v2 it was very much about improvements so it was kind of segue from the sea wolf 9 and megan was able to add a lot of um, improvements to the inside to the interior last year one of the biggest problems we had was overheating the inside would get really hot and our program has it where it shuts down automatically if it's too hot to keep from messing anything up 
So our big thing was to try to find a way to keep the inside cool. We had very little time to build this RV. We had like probably four months less than the other teams because we started very late. Worked with what we had in our lab and that wasn't very much, but we made it work. Now, of course, these incredible robots aren't designed to roam through the jungle or take off into the air. They're called underwater ROVs for a reason. So I think it's time to join them in their own natural habitat. Just like with the development of any new technology, there are always issues or problems along the way. Not everything goes quite as planned, which is why the engineering skills learned here are so important in not just solving these challenges, but also any other hiccups that could come your way. Tether management, we need to work on that a little bit. I uh, had a hiccup with the ghost net. The mounting of the gripper fell down. It broke up, uh, some other parts broke up, so we had to improve. Uh, we are here, we are fighting, we are improving. Since being in California, our bot hasn't been used to the heat. Uh, we've had a lot of heating issues that have sort of interrupted the capabilities of our Raspberry Pis. If you take a look around us, there are a number of incredible challenges that we continue to face, especially when it comes to our oceans. How do we reduce our impact on these environments when dealing with plastic pollution and waste? How do we improve technology to better utilize renewable resources? The answer to these questions are not only going to require a change in humanity's way of thinking, but will also require engineering expertise to be able to develop the tools that we need to address these issues. Students here are able to get hands-on and implement some of the fundamental lessons they learn in the classroom in a both fun and creative atmosphere. You get a chance to explore your curiosity using innovative tools, problem solve in a collaborative environment, learn from your friends, and make new ones. Being a part of a competition like this can help prepare you for a future in science, technology, engineering, or math. Favorite robot of all time. Wally. That AI from her. Tires from Interstellar. The robot from Honda. CP3O. Terminator. Cars, obviously. For anybody that's not here that's like, ah, uh, ROVs aren't cool, this isn't the place to be, what would you tell them? This is absolutely the place to be. It really blows your expectations for all of the different things you can do on a team. You don't have to have like a $10,000 grant from a prestigious university. All you really need is like a Home Depot near you and like some electronics. It's all the good parts of swimming without the getting wet part. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? What you engineer here at the Mate ROV competition could very well be the building block to planet Earth's most viable technological achievement. And that's an accomplishment worth taking a dive for. <laughs>